Interestingly, I see two type of characters when Moon comes with Ketu. First type, who is utterly frustrated because he or she cannot have enough sex, enough pleasures, enough wealth, and so he or she is always seen struggling to get what they feel lacks in their life. And the second type. who is extremely joyous extremely lovable extremely detached and who is simply happy to have risen above the physical desires of this human body such a person has the potential to attain spiritual peak the ultimate peak of consciousness now understand the fact that the same ketu can frustrate you if you are too bhogi meaning if you are too pleasure seeking by nature and the same ketu can uplift you motivate you to turn inwards and realize yourself if you are a yogi by nature how to find the nature and the answer to this question comes not from just one entity but a whole combination of planetary aspects and placements that signals the nature of the person in question based on the nature that is bhogi or a yogi material or spiritual the future course of your life starts appearing a man with rahu and moon is always fearful his nature is to cling and this nature of clinging brings the fear of losing and buddha says you only lose what you cling to a man with ketu and moon has tremendous courage he has all the potential to become the greatest mafia or the greatest yogi there is no middle ground for such a person it is either this side or that side because in both cases you need to go beyond mind ketu can make you a madman or a great yogi if you observe closely then there is a similarity between the two a madman is already out of his mind but through the wrong door he still has no consciousness to his being a yogi is also out of his mind but there is tremendous consciousness to his being have you ever seen a madman when a madman looks at a person he is totally blank as if he is simply scanning you through his glance whether the most beautiful woman is standing before him or the most simple woman that does not affect him in any way because there is absolutely no mind he just stares at you but that staring has no colors of judging he just goes on looking at you and that's all and a yogi also when looks at you there is no mind no judging he simply looks at you blankly as if your whole being from inside out is being scanned by his gracious eyes the only difference is that that the yogi is looking at you consciously through his self whereas the madman is looking at you with no consciousness what is common is looking what is not the same is the consciousness so there is a lot of similarity between a yogi and a madman maybe that is why one man went all over the world in search of mad people and transformed them into enlightened beings and his name was avatar meher baba and i love him from the bottom of my heart it is a strange world here really great things are never rewarded nobody has bothered about meher baba Mother Teresa will get a Nobel prize because she looks after poor orphan children and nobody thought of giving a Nobel prize to Meher Baba 
who really did a miraculous job and he was the only man after centuries says osho rajnish and great men never desire for any awards or rewards the love that they receive from the people is itself the greatest reward for them meher baba traveled all over the world millions and millions of followers loved him but many would wonder that why meher baba is always interested to enlighten the mad insane people when so many sane people are available and one day one devotee asked this question and meher baba smiled and he said you don't understand to bring a sane person out of his sanity is very difficult but to bring out a madman is very easy because in a way he is already out but from the back door he has tasted something of the outside we have only to show him the right door and say please don't go out from the wrong door go from the right door being out is perfectly right but choose the right door and meher baba transformed many madmen into enlightened beings i humbly salute and prostrate to his holiness avatar meher baba maybe some day i may get to travel to his samadhi mandir in a town that is now named on his name meherabad which is near ahmednagar maharashtra there is no higher or lower goal there is only one goal and that is self realization says meher baba a beautiful rare picture of his holiness avatar meher baba a yogi is all for the truth ketu is all for the truth but rahu is all for the fake because the rahu itself is fake rahu is a lie rahu has no substance no ethics no morality and when there is no truth fear exists and therefore rahu is fear and so when rahu comes face to face with a warrior that is mars or a holy priest that is jupiter it is going to feel very uncomfortable because the fake cannot stand the vibrant energy of the truth a truthful woman will never fear a truthful man will never fear but a man or a woman who is hiding who has something to hide will always fear there is some secret some scenes some acts some stories that need not be unrevealed and so fear is there then what do such men or women do they make a lot of noise they shout they scream they yell fear tries to mask the truth by creating a scene a drama by creating a lot of noise fear is rahu and fear brings a sense of insecurity to you and this fear of insecurity compels you to make a lot of noise always remember confidence is silent insecurities are loud a truthful man is always found to be silent his silence is a peaceful silence it is not out of compulsion it is out of choice rahu is fear mars is courage and courage comes only when you are truthful and truth always remains silent it is a buddhist silence it is a jesus silence truth needs no justification it shines on its own when the time comes it is said that when jesus was hanged on the cross 
and the romans were about to crucify him pointus the roman prefect who was supervising this had asked one last question to jesus what is the truth and jesus just looked into pointus eyes and remained silent it was the buddhist silence truth cannot be expressed in words it can only be realized in deep silence and this silence of jesus moved pointus he cannot stand before jesus he had made jesus naked but in reality he felt as if he was standing naked before jesus and so pointus says to his men take this man away from me i cannot stand before him fear cannot stand before the truth pointus could not stand before jesus people want to hear the truth but the real question is are they willing to digest the truth and so i hold myself from responding to those many emails that come to me somebody wants to know if he can marry a girl and i see that the girl is a total fake but how to tell him the truth somebody wants to know about filing a divorce and i see that divorce will simply destroy his life but how to tell him the truth and so i remain silent it is a buddhist silence only those can be awakened who have truth in themselves who are truthful by nature because only truth has the courage to accept the reality jesus did not respond to pointer's question because pointer's was not a truthful man so what was the point to respond and so jesus remained silent but that silence is so deeply penetrating into pointer's whole being that pointer's leaves and asks his men to crucify jesus he could not even stand he could not stand even the glance of jesus what to say about words had jesus spoken something has always been said even if it is only that nothing can be said only buddha has remained totally silent and jesus remained silent he did not answer he did not respond truth will never respond it will only respond when there is a certain level of understanding in the person who is asking the question a certain level of understanding has to be there only then the truths can be given only a man a woman who can understand the language of silence can understand the words that are shared unless you raise your level of consciousness how can i help you how can i respond how can i share the truths of your life and so the wise seers and sages have said that unless you are ready the master will not appear the answer will not come the prayers will not be answered when the disciple is ready the master appears rahu is fear black magic wodu spells and all kind of such negative arts of magic is basically to boost fear this fear then goes on killing you every day trust is lost love is lost life is lost in my life i have seen and also helped many victims of black magic and so i know how it all happens and how fear captures your mind and then you no more remain an open person you become a closed person a person who doubts everybody everything and doubt is a death you see this is how rahu this is how black magic leads you to fear because the moment you are grasped with fear life ends 
and the moment there is no fear life begins life begins where fear ends this fear is rahu when you overcome rahu your life starts blossoming into a beautiful flower and this is how rahu leads to fear because rahu is not transparent there is something that is being hidden something that is not right and so the fear is always there whereas on the other side ketu is totally open there is no nature of clinging as far as ketu is concerned that is why the nakshatra of magha the nakshatra of mula and the nakshatra of ashwini these are the nakshatras where the nature of holding on where the nature of clinging doesn't exist but when it comes to adra when it comes to swati when it comes to shatataraka these nakshatras will bring fame will bring lots of money but they will also bring the intense nature of clinging holding on not letting go and when you are caught up in this nature of holding on clinging then the fights begin then the disputes which finally leads you to miseries so it is all interconnected and that is why in the kingdom of ketu there is pin drop silence silence is the language of ketu and when it comes to rahu there is only noise 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 and only noise knowledge is noisy truth can be found only in silence do you know once it happened when american person he came to meet bhagwan raman maharshi and it is a old time story so during those days he had acquired he had somehow he had managed to get a camera and a recording machine so he wanted to record the voice of raman maharshi bhagwan raman maharshi so he came and he said to bhagwan that i have brought this recording machine so i would like to record your voice so bhagwan smiled and said and he allowed him so then the foreigner the american person he told everybody in the ashram to maintain pin drop silence nobody should speak only bhagwan should speak when he switches that recorder so everybody agreed and then the person he switched on the recorder and bhagwan remained silent and the american was surprised because bhagwan was not speaking when he was supposed to speak so after 5 minutes he switched off the recorder he came to bhagwan he bowed before the master and he said bhagwan you didn't speak and bhagwan said i spoke silence is my language how beautiful the bhagwan says that silence is my language 
as you come closer and closer to the kingdom of Ketu, you will rejoice in silence. You will understand the meaning, the depth, the beauty of silence. And you will also realize that a real communication happens in silence. Enough for now. Jai Sri Ganesha. Jai Guru. गम गणपतये नमः ओम गम गणपतये नमः ओम गम गणपतये नमः